Hey there, game developers. It is me, Titan Hex, and I'm here with yet another tutorial. This time we are going to be getting into the event commands, uh, the last leg of our journey here on that third tab. Uh, we, we are going to be getting into system settings, map, battle, and then the advanced parts. Just a real quick overview of those. It won't take us long, I'm sure, and once we're done here, we're going to start getting into some of the other parts of the game uh, engine, and we'll be looking at some little lesser-known things, uh, the little quirks and pieces to the engine, um, things that are really actually good to know. So we're going to go ahead and start by jumping here into system settings. Starting with the change battle BGM. So this is how you change the battle background music. It's good for maybe um, boss fights. You definitely want to change the battle BGM for, before a boss fight. Um, before any kind of uh, maybe a change in dungeon. You might have different dungeon music. And changing the battle BGM might signify things like that. So changing that is very useful. And you can find it right here course you have the victory music effect uh, you're gonna by the way find that these are set default in the system part so you're gonna be able to change a lot of this uh, these two things uh, well mainly this right here this music part through the third tab under system settings so you can change the victory music effect the defeat music effect um, the battle or the vehicle background music, so the music that plays when you're on a vehicle, uh, your save access. Um, I believe you can, hmm, I think you can set this to none. Yeah, you can. Good. So you can set it to none so that music stays the same to, between vehicle on and off. Uh, so then you have save access, so you can't access save through the menu, uh, which is good for custom or, or evented save systems. Um, you can turn off menu access, which, which is good when you want to program your own menu or when you have a special sub menu um, or you're in a, a mini game that doesn't allow you to access the menu. Uh, there'll be quite a few times where you want to make sure you turn menu access off. And we'll be taking a look at some of those in the systems that we create. So change encounter is um, to enable and disable whether or not you encounter monsters, which is particularly useful when you hit like a, a cutscene um, or, or maybe something changes in the environment and you don't want encounters to happen or you do want encounters to happen right there that's the guy change formation access I believe this rearrange or oh, this in the menu there is a way to change the formation of characters so who's in front and who's uh, towards the back we can disable that so that you can't change who's in front uh, and it's not bad to set this up to, to program our own uh, formation access menu, which isn't a bad idea. So then you have change window color. Pretty simple guy right there. Uh, I mean, really nothing special here. It's going to be the background of the window. Uh, it has its own little default color, but uh, you can kind of adjust it to be whatever you want. Um, it In the older versions, it used to be picture-based, but I think they switched to this newer drawn method for mobile devices. Um, so just be mindful of that. Uh, it's good for that. And you can always download plugins that allow you to, to manipulate the windows a little bit more. But this is a nice basic one that doesn't hurt to have. So next is change actor images, and this one allows you to change the images for the actors, their side view battler, their uh, the character that represents them, the pick, like the character that they are, and the face that is used. So this can be really useful if you want to uh, maybe have some sort of temporary character that we can uh, switch to for special events. Um, maybe being able to control the player will be a lot more a lot easier in the long run um so maybe having a special character set up for that or maybe just changing small things uh allowing a character to transform into a bird or any kind of thing like that uh, i imagine you could create a skill that would change your character into a bird um, 
neat little things like that can be done through change actor images and it's also good for if you want the player to be able to create their own hero um, this allows you to manipulate those and have it set up how you feel uh, next is change vehicle image and so you can change the uh, image for a vehicle uh, maybe you can upgrade a vehicle or anything like that you can manipulate that through here so next we have the uh, map section and there's there's not a ton here to look at we'll just get real into it real quick so in the top left you can turn on and off whether or not the name of the map is displayed in the top left when you enter the map um, usually it's it's not bad to have that on you can do some pretty cool things with that next is change tile set so you can change the tile set being used um, it could allow you to sort of manipulate and change the colors of the tile set uh, in fact I can make a night tile set so when it changes to night the tile set changes um, things like that can do some some really cool stuff or maybe you enter into a dark world and it's basically just a tile set change so it's cool little things like that we can do using change tile set followed by change battle back uh, change battle back is sort of the uh, you can change basically the background uh, for the battles that you run into this is useful for if you have boss fights especially or maybe when you step onto a new random encounter in a new environment you, you'll want to change this so make sure you do that um, it it's it's pretty self-explanatory pretty simple right there nothing too complex next is change parallax I believe we went over parallax in one of the beginner ones um, going over the um, settings for a map this allows you to change the battle back to whatever you want it to be which can be very useful it almost it, for parallaxing it can do quite a few things um, and you can change whether how it's looping or if it's looping at all and you can turn on and off the looping so you can create some cool little effects using the change parallax um, it's more of a a scenic thing uh, maybe a cutscene might use it or something like that or maybe a change in the environment but uh, this is how you would do it so next is get location info and we can get different info now this is actually pretty useful but we can get different info from where the player is standing and we can use terrain tags to uh, or, or tile IDs based on the layer uh, that we're trying to get from so the first layer is of course the uh, ground layer and then there's an upper layer just above that that's usually these guys right here on this right side so that's usually the second layer um, and these are usually the first layer and then b and c are layers three and four depending on whether it's above or below the other uh, tile set or well underneath another tile so followed by region id so we can grab the region id uh, for we can paint a region id here and we can figure out what region id the player is on um, and we can also by the way this is it, it it pulls it from a specific location so i can check it in a specific location or i can use variables to save the player's position and then find out what the player like what position the player is standing on uh, what the terrain tag is, the uh, event ID that they're standing on might be. So this can be really useful for seeing if a certain item has been pushed onto another item or, or a whole set of different puzzles can be done with this. Uh, it, it can become very complex, but overall it can be super useful. Um, and we can choose where it's saved and it usually will... Uh, variables are always saved as numbers so you're going to get the tag as a number or the event id or tile id or region id as a number and if you're wondering where tile tags are we can go to our terrain tags are we can go to this, uh, database into tile sets and terrain tags are right here and we can change what tag a t specific terrain has so we can set up neat little things where if you're on sand, it'll know that you're on sand and we don't have to paint it. Um, and we can set up sort of a whole slew of cool little things like that. So the get location info is super useful and there's a lot of things we can do with it. And I'm sure we'll find a whole bunch of uses when we start going over puzzles. Next, we have the battle section. Battle section is mainly going to be used here in the 
event part of the troops. So this is going to be a little bit more of um, we're, we'll be going over this in the advanced tutorial. A lot of people uh, will use this for boss fights and special boss battles, but uh, usually it's it's I, I'd consider anywhere from intermediate to advanced. Uh, it might be one of the first things we go over in the new or in the advanced tutorials. So basically you can change a bunch of things about the enemy like bat or moonlit bat in this battle. I can change a whole bunch of stuff, decrease um, their HP, their MP, um, TP. I can make special events where um, different things happen based on like maybe a switch turning on. I can use a common event to turn on a switch and using something like the conditions uh, switch uh, is on. I can do a whole bunch of things like maybe you can use a special talk to the enemy uh, ability and if it succeeds something happens so things like that can happen uh and then you have change enemy hp mp and tp you can just change stuff like that about an enemy um a healing state or or something like that uh, you can add or remove an enemy uh, or a state on an enemy uh, you can recover all of the stat or like the hp mp all of that stuff you can recover on either the entire troop or a specific enemy uh, we can make an enemy appear so if i right click one of these and i say appear halfway i can make use the uh enemy appear on that to make or on that uh halfway appear halfway enemy to make them suddenly appear so keep that in mind I can also transform enemies into other enemies. So maybe something happens and an enemy becomes even stronger or even weaker or things like that. Um, I could like make it where a slime, uh, if a slime hits a certain threshold of hit points, he splits into two slimes um, and I can use the enemy appears. Um, I can also make it so that they can form back together and there, there's just a whole bunch of things I can do that, that are pretty neat like that. Force action forces a enemy to or well actor or enemy to use a action in battle. So um, it forces them to do something. So you can maybe make your entire party uh, attack the last target they attacked or a random target. So I could have a special skill that makes all the enemies, all of the bats, like if, if a lead bat is uses a special skill, all the bats will attack at once. Um, and this will give them, I believe this gives them an extra, um, an extra attack. So this doesn't count towards their actual action, but I could be wrong there. It's something you would definitely want to test in the, uh, test scene, the battle test right here. So you'd want to test that, but basically it forces a character to use an action uh, and I believe even if the character doesn't have the action, they'll still do it. So if I wanted them to use weight or uh, triple attack and they don't have triple attack, I think they will still use it. Uh, I could be wrong. Worth a test. So try it out. And then abort battle, of course, just exits the battle completely. It doesn't count as a win or a loss. Uh, it just leaves the battle uh, and boots you from it. So you might use that in a couple instances. So finally, after going over those, is the advanced part. So there's the script, and we can just script our own little things here. Uh, we can use... There, there's a few instances where we, we might want to use a script. Um, we can make use of local variables and all this other neat little stuff that can be very useful inside of a script. Um, so there's quite a few things that we can do here, especially if we have scripting knowledge. But for now... Uh, that's way more, way more advanced. So we're not going to get into that. And there's plugin command. So plugins can be created with um, commands in mind that you can call from this event command. Uh, maybe call up a menu using a plugin command or a whole bunch of other things that could be very useful. Um, and it's all going to depend on the plugin. But if a plugin has a plugin command, this is how you use it. So simple enough, uh, really easy. And uh, really nothing special to, to go over in those. Um, there's definitely some really useful stuff there. Uh, terrain tags 
um, and getting location info, that's definitely going to be useful. But for the most part, that that's just the sum of, of this final leg of the event commands. So with this extra knowledge, I hope you, you are feeling a little bit more comfortable with events. We're definitely going to start getting into some systems and we're going to learn how to piece together some of these events that we've gone through um, and turn them into even more advanced systems. I'm going to show you some concepts um, where you stack certain events together and it creates a system that we can use to create even more systems. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of stuff like that and we're going to go over some more parts of the... Um, this whole software. We're going to look into some deeper parts of the software, um, specifications, um, resource sizes, things like that, uh, that'll allow you to maybe, th that it'll show you how to do some cool things that you didn't know that you even could do. And uh, we're going to be getting into that pretty soon. So get, get excited, get ready, get, get your thinking caps on. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And you know what? Thank you for your support. Thank you for commenting, liking, subscribing. Uh, as always, I have a Patreon. I have some awesome bonuses for you. Uh, some extra artwork for your games. Some stuff like that. Uh, Patron-only stuff. Um, access to a whole slew of neat stuff. So if you want to, I definitely suggest supporting me through Patreon so I can continue to do this. Thank you. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.